This is Matthew Cratter's Bitcoin University. Today I want to talk about the Bitcoin Dark Skippy attack. What is Dark Skippy? It's unfortunately not a delicious mixture of chocolate and peanut butter. Rather, it's a malicious new attack that could cause you to lose all the Bitcoin that's on your hardware wallet if you do not take the proper precautions. Now, your Bitcoin is not actually stored on your hardware wallet, but your private keys are. All of your private keys and the corresponding Bitcoin addresses that you control with those private keys are derived from what's called your seed, your recovery seed, your 12 words or 24 words, which have been randomly generated by your hardware wallet and then kept safe deep inside your hardware wallet. And if anyone has this seed, this 12 or 24 word seed, they can instantly steal your Bitcoin. They don't even need access to your hardware wallet if they already have your seed. And what Dark Skippy does is to steal your seed from deep inside your hardware device and then broadcast it to the Bitcoin network when you make a Bitcoin transaction. Your seed or technically your full master private key in a Dark Skippy attack is embedded in your Bitcoin transaction without your knowledge by Dark Skippy and then is tagged with a watermark that the attacker watches his mempool for. When he sees your transaction with this watermark, he can quickly crunch some numbers to extract your full seed from the broadcasted Bitcoin transaction that you just sent out. And then he uses that seed to move your Bitcoin to an address that he controls and your Bitcoin is gone forever. Even if you use your hardware wallet in an air-gapped manner, i.e. not plugged into the USB port, of your computer. So this is an especially disturbing attack. It's especially disturbing as well when you realize that when you contemplate that because your attacker can wait as long as he wants before stealing your Bitcoin, he may wait until you built up a larger balance of Bitcoin before sweeping all of it. If you're finding this video helpful so far, I just ask you to help to get the message out by supporting this channel. Click the subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment, question, suggestion for a future video, and share this video with a friend or family member. Now, Dark Skippy is a new example of an old and very well-known class of attacks that use malicious firmware on your hardware wallet, also sometimes known as a signing device because they sign Bitcoin transactions. Dark Skippy uses malicious firmware on your hardware wallet to, seal, to steal your Bitcoin. Now, how does this malicious firmware get there? There are a number of ways. There's the old so-called evil maid attack where you leave your hardware wallet unattended at a cafe or a hotel room. It doesn't have to be, obviously, a maid who does this. Anyone could do it, any attacker. And the attacker simply swaps out your hardware wallet for a different malicious one that looks the same or quickly flashes your hardware wallet with malicious firmware if you leave your hardware wallet unlocked and they can get access to it. So this is one reason why you should never leave your hardware wallet unattended. You probably shouldn't take it everywhere with you in public. And this is also why you should protect it with a pin code that keeps it locked and all the major hardware wallet manufacturers provide this feature. The cold card hardware wallet has an especially nice feature that allows you to enter part of your pin code and then flashes two words known as the anti-phishing words on the screen that only you know before allowing you to enter the rest of your pin code to unlock the cold card. Otherwise, if it was a scammy device, you enter your whole pin and then maybe there's a little radio broadcaster or something in there that sends your pin remotely uh, to the attacker. So this is one way of knowing whether you have the correct device. A cold card does security in a really amazing way. If you enter on a cold card, if you enter the first part of your pin and you don't recognize the two anti-phishing words that appear on the screen, then you can be pretty sure that your cold card has been tampered with and should not be used to sign transactions. And you shouldn't enter the second part of your pin, obviously, either in a situation like that. This is also why you should never buy a used hardware wallet or you should never buy a new hardware wallet from a third party like on Amazon. You should always buy directly from the company itself, directly from cold card or directly from Blockstream. And then when your hardware wallet arrives in the mail, verify that it has not been tampered with en route, which could be a sign that someone has loaded malicious firmware onto it or substituted a malicious device, a different hardware wallet for the one that the honest company shipped you. So this is how cold card does it. They do a great job with their tamper evident bag. And then there are a couple other features which I'll link to in the description notes below. Now, another way that malicious firmware can get on your hardware device is if you put it there. All legitimate commercial hardware wallets like the cold card and the Blockstream Jade come with what's called a bootloader, just a simple software installation program that also checks the firmware before, before allowing it to be installed on the device. And if the device does not recognize the signature of the firmware, it will not allow it to be installed. The cold card also checks the firmware every time you boot it up and gives you a resulting green or red light 
to let you know whether it's safe to enter your PIN or to begin to enter the first half of your PIN, or whether the device or firmware has been tampered with and thus is not safe to use. Each time a cold card connects to power, it verifies the firmware signature and checks all data stored in its flash memory. The red caution LED is lit during this process while the screen displays the verification notification message. Once the signature and flash memory are verified, the green genuine LED indicates that it's safe to enter your PIN. If the firmware is not factory signed, the red caution LED stays lit as a warning not to enter your PIN. And I'll put a link to this in the description notes below. Now, if you're a more advanced user, you should also be manually verifying the signature and hash of any new firmware before installing it using PGP, GPG tools. This is something that every serious Bitcoiner at some point should eventually learn how to do before installing any important Bitcoin software like Sparrow Wallet, for example. Here are two guides how to do it with cold card. This is the paranoid guide, and this is the upgrading the firmware and verifying the firmware guide. So I'll link to both of those in the description notes below. If you need more handholding, this is something that I also teach in my paid course. I teach signature and hash verification for various programs, how to protect your Bitcoin from malicious software. It's important to note that verifying the firmware only protects you against installing the wrong firmware. It does not protect you from a malicious company that is intentionally signed malicious software. So there's always this hardware wallet vendor risk in the question, will the hardware wallet maker try to use their hardware or their firmware to steal your Bitcoin? Now you can mitigate against this by using a well-known project that has lots of eyes on it like Blockstream Jade, Cold Card, Foundation Passport is another good one that I should probably talk about more. All of these projects use open source and or viewable firmware that anyone can verify to make sure that the company has not inserted malicious code into the software or firmware. If a company shipped malicious code in its firmware, it would be discovered by the many eyes on it and widely broadcast on X, on Twitter and elsewhere, and the hardware wallet maker would instantly go out of business. Other hardware wallets, I don't really like the Ledger because they have a long history of disregarding user privacy and adding lots of trackers to their software. They also support altcoins, ship coins. I don't like Trezor for the same reason because they also offer altcoin support. This gives many of their devices a wider attack surface and it also just helps to prop up a very scammy ecosystem. And this is not something that ethical companies should be doing, supporting altcoins, which just end up getting their customers wrecked. But don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Don't leave your Bitcoin at Coinbase or any other exchange just because you only have a ledger or a treasure. In this case, it's still much better to use a ledger or treasure in that situation and just get your coins off of the exchange. Important final note, adding a passphrase, a 13th or 25th word to your 12 or 24 word seed will not protect you against Dark Skippy since Dark Skippy uses your master private key, not just your seed phrase. Your master private key is derived from your seed plus your passphrase. Now, another great way for more advanced users to protect against Dark Skippy and similar attacks is to use multi-sig, especially multi-vendor multi-sig where you're using hardware wallets from different manufacturers to sign a Bitcoin transaction. And under multi-sig, you need a certain number of signatures to move the Bitcoin. So two out of three hardware wallets signing or three out of five hardware wallets signing. And this allows you to diversify across different wallet manufacturers, hardware wallet manufacturers, and diversify across their firmware as well. There are two main ways to do multi-sig. You can use a collaborative custody solution like Unchained, which holds one key while you hold two keys. I'll put a link in the description notes below. I'm not being paid or otherwise compensated by them in any ways, but I do like this company and their multi-sig vaults are great. There's also the more private do-it-yourself solution, which is what I teach in my paid course, the ultimate Bitcoin storage solution, do it yourself, multi-vendor, multi-sig, which will definitely ensure your privacy while protecting you against all kinds of different firmware attacks, including nonce attacks like Dark Skippy. Holding your Bitcoin private keys on a hardware wallet like the Blockstream Jade or the Cold Card does remain the best way to protect your Bitcoin, whether you're using single sig or multi-sig. So don't let fears about Dark Skippy lead you to leave your coins on the exchange or worse yet, build your own security storage solutions. Using a laptop, using a phone to store your Bitcoin, or your Bitcoin private keys is a really, really bad idea. Even if it's offline, if it's air-gapped, etc. There are many, many ways to mess this up. And there's so many places to hide malicious code on a general hardware device like a laptop or a phone. Hardware wallets fix this by stripping down the hardware and firmware to the bare minimum 
that's necessary to do one thing and one thing only and do it really well. Safely generate your seed, safely hold your seed securely offline, and safely sign Bitcoin transactions without leaking your private keys to the internet. And building your own private key storage solution will almost certainly lead you to losing your Bitcoin. It's even happened to highly sophisticated Bitcoin core devs. So use the devices, use the things that are available and that are widely vetted like well-known hardware wallets. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.